progress that it shall make. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dr. Rajan Prasad. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I also, seeing as it's my first uh, time in this Parliament, uh, taking a call, congratulate yourself and your colleagues, the three speakers, uh, on their reappointment. Uh, may I also acknowledge those who have given their maiden speeches and, uh, and uh, say how much I enjoyed those. Always reminds you of when your turn had come three years ago to give a maiden speech. So there's a lot of uh, feeling on our part to who, those of us who are not that old, uh, uh, meaning not too new to this, not too old to this parliament, uh, knowing where you were, and really wish those who are yet to come the best for, for the speeches uh, that we'll hear in the next week or so. Um, I also wanted to congratulate uh, Minister uh, for uh, Mr. Tremaine for his first bill. Uh, we were in the gym together over lunch and uh, noticed he was looking forward to introducing his first bill. Uh, and and uh, Beg your pardon? So, uh, for the, full, the, full, the full hour, I didn't see you there, Mr. Brownlee. You know, it's, 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 it's great. It, uh, it makes the afternoon go a lot better in the House with a lot more energy. So, uh, but uh, Minister Tremaine did enjoy himself, and uh, he was leaving as I was starting. Uh, but the full hour, indeed, indeed. Um, I, I do want to acknowledge, Mr. Speaker, that I'm, I'm new to consumer law. Um, and, uh, and so it was fascinating uh, being, being uh, asked to speak for this particular bill and reading it and re reading all of the documents. And of course it does remind yourself uh, that while you might be new to, while well, one might be new to consumer law, one is not a new consumer. So I'm sure there are many, many times that I've been ripped off as well, but not knowing uh, what we, one could have done about that. Uh, brought, uh, this bill brought those things to mind. But perhaps the one thing that it did make me realize is that the relationship between a consumer and a supplier of goods and services is a complex one. Um, and, and it is almost by definition an unequal relationship where often the supplier holds a stronger hand. Often that is so, might not be the case all the time. And consequently, uh, it, it it's important to realize that it is a symbiotic relationship where progress can only be made with the, by one with the participation of the other. And unless that happens, progress is not made. Um, so it is in the interests uh, of suppliers of goods and services to maintain their competitive edge uh, and, and, constant, and const to constantly redesign their modus operandi to, to maximize the returns. So, so it becomes then, as I was saying, a symbiotic relationship and, and both ends, bo both, both, relation, both actors in the relationship are important. It has not often been the case, uh, but is so here. Uh, and of course, once we realize that, it, that in advantaging one side of the equation, a number of allied, one, one, one partner rather, a number of allied professions have also developed to provide an, an edge for the suppliers of goods and services, and, and whether it's marketing or, or, or other marketing-related activities, it is designed to give uh, an edge to one side. Sometimes suppliers engage in practices that entrap innocent consumers, uh, while others give legitimate, and when, when people do this, they give legitimate suppliers and honest suppliers a bad name. And, we're talking uh, earlier in, in, in question time about loan sharks. And indeed, you know, when, when one follows the experiences of some who have uh, gone through that process, uh, loan sharks come to mind as, as an example of where the relationship is totally unbalanced. Uh, and I hope that the parliament, this parliament will do something about that. Sometimes those who are caught through these practices are vulnerable people. And those are the ones that many of us probably see in, in our uh, out of parliament offices. Uh, and, and, and clearly, they have been taken advantage of by unscrupulous suppliers. So consequently, as the system has got complex, other speakers have talked about electronic uh, purchase and, and, and what have you, as those system has got complex, it is important to modernize our laws uh, to, uh, and, and to protect vulnerable people at the same time enable legitimate transactions between parties to be conducted fairly and predictably. 
So, Mr. Speaker, this is, this is what this bill sets about uh, doing. Um, and, and perhaps the most uh, 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 satisfying part of it is, is to realize that it is principles-based. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a complex bill to get your head around because there are four bills plus a new one that, that are being addressed through this particular uh, omnibus bill. But, but certainly that uh, uh, enables consumers to, to should enable uh, consumers to transact with good confidence, protect suppliers and consumers from inappropriate market conduct and make it easier for those affected uh, to access the provisions of the bill to, to get some redress. And indeed, the final one is to realign ourselves uh, with Australia. Uh, but as I was saying, the, the, the intentions are given effect in the purpose clause of the Fair, uh, Fair Trading Act that, that, that's on Clause 9 of, of, that particular, uh, of this particular bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Omnibus Bill makes changes to, as I said, a, a significant number of provisions um, in the Fair Trading Act and clarifies the respective rights and obligations of those providing goods and services and those receiving uh, goods and services. Uh, there are some provisions that were attractive to me because I, I, I could relate to them. Uh, and and I, it, it, this bill makes new provisions for sending and receiving unsolicited solicited goods and services. And I think the solution that there's in this particular part of this bill is actually uh, quite clever, uh, uh, I believe, and might even be elegant. Uh, and could, that, word, that word could be used in this sense. So the receiver's liability, so if somebody sends unsolicited goods to someone else, then the receiver's liabilities are reduced uh, from three months to ten, 10 working days. So if a person in trade sends goods that are unsolicited, provided the receiver indicates it is not accepted, the re receiver has no liability beyond those 10 days, so has to indicate that. Of course, that could be open for, for uh, abuse. I don't know, what, what if you call on, on the ninth day to say it is not accepted? and then the other party has one day to remove the goods. So, uh, but, but I'm sure the Select Committee will, will follow those up. In addition, if the goods are not collected, and this is the elegant part, within 10 working days, the good becomes an unconditional gift to the receiver. Well, I wish people would send me rather expensive things, unsolicited, and after 10 days it becomes an unconditional gift to the receiver. So here the onus is shifting to the sender of, of goods and services. This is a good provision, especially for vulnerable people who could be taken advantage of. Uh, the bill also adds some new provisions for particular goods being declared unsafe. And other speakers have talked about that. And th that clause becomes important, particularly today, when so much of what we import is made somewhere else and often under different regulatory uh, uh, systems. So, uh, so if, if it, when it comes to, to New Zealand, then that's another part uh, uh, that becomes important. But perhaps, Mr. Speaker, the, the, uh, the, the advantage here is that a whole, se a whole series of provisions are being addressed, and I agree with uh, Leon Dalziel, who said that the, the regular impact statement was very detailed, um, and it does provide a very good way for the Select Committee to look at all of those things. There are some provisions here around contracts. And the only bit that worried me a little bit, and perhaps the Select Committee can look at that, I noticed that the bill requires, the provisions here requires those things to be in plain English and easily understandable. But in a diversifying, diversifying New Zealand, where in Auckland there are, now, there are now large numbers of people for whom English is not a first language, will the provisions still be understood? by those people and some attention could be paid to see how those who are not familiar with, uh, with uh, uh, even plain English can still be enabled to understand what the provisions are so that they will be looking at that. Mr. Speaker, uh, much has been said, uh, but we, we support this and we look forward to the discussions of the Select Committee and further discussions when the bill is reported back. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The question is that the uh, motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Consumer Law Reform Bill, first reading. The question is that the Consumer Law Reform Bill be considered by the Commerce Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it.
call Government Order of the Day number three.